Hey toy fans, I'm D21Beast and welcome back to my figure review series here on my YouTube channel. And today we're taking a look at a pretty special figure that came out back in 2007. That's right, this is the San Diego Comic Con exclusive Marvel Legends Stan Lee figure from Hasbro. This is a really fun and really fantastic figure that we got well, about seven years ago now. And it's great that we got it when we did because this is when Hasbro first took over the Marvel Legends license and a lot of the figures they were releasing around that time weren't that great and are best left forgotten. But this Stan Lee was really something special and really kind of a fun idea that they put together for the convention. I want to start by taking a look at the box here. Let's start by taking a look at the left side of the package here, and as we scroll down here, what you're going to see is an image of Stan Lee saving Spider-Man. Now, this particular image is actually an homage to Amazing Fantasy number 15, which was the first appearance of Spider-Man in comics. So it's great to see Stan Lee swapping places with Spider-Man on that comic book cover, and instead saving Spider-Man this time. Really fun image, and glad that they put that on the box cover. And as we scroll down here, we do have an additional image of Stan Lee here drawn, as well as a signature here on the left side. And as we take a look at the right side of the box here, what you're going to see there is a Marvel Legends logo that was current as of 2007. And we have an image there showcasing the San Diego Comic-Con International logo. And then of course we have Stan Lee here in a window box packaging so you can see the figure in all of his glory. And as we scroll down here we've got some text relating to a comic book that is told on the cover of this box. So let's go ahead and take a look at that comic book. So a really fun feature that I definitely need to show off about this box is what's here on the left side. You flip up this lid and inside you actually get an original comic created for the San Diego Comic Con exclusive figure. We've got a story here where Spider-Man's just swinging around, Stanley gets hired on at the bugle, Spider-Man slips on a banana peel, Stanley sees his chance to be a hero, he catches Spidey, Spidey's amazed, Stanley steals his web shooter and he's off and on his way. That crazy Stan Lee. But also here at the bottom of the box, we've got an additional window package that shows all the accessories this figure comes with. So taking a look now at the left side of the box here, we do have an image of Peter Parker unmasked as Spider-Man. And when we look at the right side of the box, we do have a full image of Spider-Man here, masked this time. And that's because this Stan Lee figure actually transforms into a fully posable Spider-Man figure. So flipping the box around here, what we can see is on the left side, we do have another image of Stan Lee there with his Spider-Man costume underneath his civilian clothes. On the right side here, we do have a comic book bio of Stan Lee, which is really fun and tongue-in-cheek. You can pause now to read more about that. And as we go down here, you do have an image of the three different heads that come with this figure. So you actually get a Stan Lee head, a Spider-Man head, and a Peter Parker head. So it's great that we actually get a Peter Parker figure, a Spider-Man figure, and a Stan Lee figure all at the same time. And to the right here, we just have an image showing you how you can do the changing feature that turns your Stan Lee into a Spider-Man. Okay, so that's our look at the box here. Let's go ahead and get this Stan Lee open and see what he's all about. All right, toy fans, here's Stan Lee out of the box, and I think he's an absolutely hilarious figure. He does come off a little frumpy with those cloth clothes there, but I think that kind of adds to the charm of the figure, so it doesn't bother me that much. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the detail on this guy here. Stan Lee is a head sculpt here that looks pretty decent for a Stan Lee. I mean, it's probably the best you're going to be able to get when you try to capture a real person's likeness. And it does have his hairline here that he's known for having, the one that's kind of uneven. We also see here that he's been sculpted with his trademark mustache, and he's got his glasses there, which is great, and they are removable. And as we go down here, you do see that he's got stitching in his jacket on the wrist, on the collar, on the zipper, on the pockets, on the waistline. Hasbro did what they could to make sure that this jacket didn't come unraveled on us. And as we get down to the pants here, he does have belt loops, a fly, a waistline, all the way down the leg of the pants. Everything is stitched, again, to make sure that this doesn't come apart on you. And then he's sculpted with these loafers here, and yes, he does even have some long black socks. Okay, so here's Stan Lee with all the accessories that he comes packed with. Now, of course, we've already mentioned that he has the removable glasses and, of course, the removable outfit. But Stanley also comes with all the necessary components to turn him into Spider-Man. So to start with here, we do have a set of boots. Now these boots have sculpted web lines in them that are filled in with a black wash, which is nice. Also he comes with a pair of gloves here with sculpted webbing. And these gloves are filled in with a black wash as well. And then he comes with a mask. Here's your Spider-Man head, sculpted web lines with the black wash. And you'll notice that this head is sculpted to look like the first appearance Spider-Man mask. And then he's got this Peter Parker head here. And finally, he comes with this mask accessory that's meant to be held. So if you have him in Spider-Man mode with the Stan Lee or the Peter Parker head, he can be holding the mask in one of his hands. Now let's show you how easy it is to go ahead and switch this character up. To start with, I'm going to take this Stan Lee, and we're just going to go ahead and remove the head. 
set that aside there. And we're going to flip him around, and he does have Velcro here on his outfit, so we'll just un-Velcro that outfit. And slip the jacket off here. And then we'll do the same thing for the pants here. Alright, and it looks like we may need to go ahead and unplug these feet here before we can get the pants off all the way. And the pants just slip right off. All right, so now we have our base body here. So let's go ahead and turn this guy into the Peter Parker Spider-Man. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the boots here. And they're gonna go on like that. It takes a little bit of pressure here to get these things on and put this other one on like that. There we go. And let's go ahead and grab that Peter Parker head and just plugs right in there. And I'll have to be patient with the joint there while you try to get that on. Okay, so that headpiece gave me a little more trouble there than I'd anticipated, but we got them all taken care of here. So now we have Peter Parker as Spider-Man, kind of in the middle of his costume changing process. And it's still pretty easy to go ahead and just pull these hands off like this. And again, just give them a little tug and go ahead and stick on these webbed hands. Now these ones, and it'll take a little force to get on there, just like that. And we'll go ahead and put this other one on here and it should go on just like that. And now we've got regular unmasked Peter Parker as Spider-Man. And let's go ahead and put the Spider-Man head on this guy. We're just going to go ahead and pop it off like that. And let's see if it's easier this time to get that Spider-Man head on there. Okay, so changing this figure's head can be a bit more of a chore than I remembered. But that's okay. We've got it taken care of. And now let's go ahead and touch on that articulation. To start with here, the Spider-Man head does bend down that far. It does look up really far, which is fantastic. His head rotates 360 degrees there on his neck. Also rotates 360 degrees at his shoulder. And he's got a bit of an armpit joint there that allows his arm to move out just a little further than normal. And then the arm itself does actually bend up about that far and down. He's got a rotation here at the bicep. He's got a double jointed elbow. He's got a rotation here at the forearm. And he's got individual finger articulation, which is fantastic. Every one of those fingers moves independently of each other. So you can really get him in these great web shooting poses like I've done here on his other hand. And of course, that articulation in the arm is the same on the other side here. He does have a diaphragm joint that bends forward that far and bends back about that far. He's got a waist rotation here so he can turn 360 degrees. He does have a ball jointed hip that allows his leg to move forward that far and move back about that far. He does have a double jointed knee and he's got a rotation there at the boot in the middle of his shin. He does have a foot that bends forward that far Bends back that far, really far, which is fantastic. He doesn't really have any ankle pivot. His foot just kind of wiggles a little bit. It doesn't stay. And he's got toe articulation that'll bend up that far. So an absolutely fantastic range of motion on this Spider-Man figure. And what you're going to notice is that this Spider-Man figure might look a little familiar. That's because it's the same sculpt as the first appearance Spider-Man figure that I think was originally part of the Galactus wave back in the day. Possibly Sentinel wave. I'll have to double check. But one of those two waves. So great reuse of a figure here and a great way to make a Stan Lee figure and have a poseable body as the base type for that toy. Now it's worth noting here that if you choose to use the regular hands here or the loafer feet, there is no articulation there. So the figure will stop where it rotates at the forearm and that's it. Or in the case of the foot, he'll stop at the boot cut, but there's no actual ankle articulation there. That's just all one solid piece. So keep that in mind as you're trying to pose civilian Spider-Man or Stan Lee. And even though he's got three different heads, this figure stands at the same height no matter what. So here we have Spider-Man standing at, oh, just over six inches there. And here's Spider-Man standing next to the Marvel Legends Infinite Series Wolverine. And Stanley Spider-Man standing next to the Spider-Man 2 Superposable Spider-Man figure. And next to the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man figure. And Target exclusive Doc Ock 2-Pack Spider-Man. And next to Marvel Legends Infinite Series The Amazing Spider-Man. And because why the heck not, a uh, Spidey conga line. Alright Toy Fans, well that's my review of the 2007 San Diego Comic Con Convention exclusive Marvel Legends Stan Lee figure by Hasbro. And I've got to say, this is one of the most fun Marvel Legends figures that I've got. He's super poseable, he's got all those great accessories to change him into Peter Parker or Stan Lee or Spider-Man. He's just a lot of fun to have and to own. If you can find this guy on the secondary market today, he does go for about $200, which is shocking considering I paid $30 bucks for him online from the Hasbro site the week after Comic-Con in 2007. I don't think they play that way anymore. Stuff now sells out on a daily basis. I think you have to go to the show to get stuff like this these days. But he's still a great figure, so if you can find him for a good price, definitely pick him up. I can't recommend him enough. He's just so much fun. 
Thanks for checking out this review, guys, and thanks so much for all your support. I'm up to 10 videos now, and I definitely think I'm going to keep doing this and keep moving forward. So please continue to rate, share, and subscribe, and I'll check you guys out next time.